On this hunt, I'm hitting the mountains of New Zealand's South Island to hunt the mystical red stag. I hear a noise. I've never heard that. With help from friend and guide Remy Warren, I'm getting an up-close and gritty introduction to one of the most stunningly beautiful landscapes I've ever set a boot on. Oh my God, look at that thing. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about sustenance and survival. It's about connecting to the land. It's about the purity of the challenge. It's about life. In each and every one of us, there is a primal instinct to hunt and consume. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. This is New Zealand's South Island, a mountainous landscape of glaciers, high peaks, and rolling grasslands that hosts an abundance of exotic game. I'm here to hunt red deer, a non-native species introduced to this country from Europe in the mid-19th century. Red deer are very closely related to American elk, and while they call those bulls and cows, these are stags and hinds. Since there are no wild predators here, this land has become home to some of the most abundant populations of red deer on the planet. Looking at the, like, what's the basic red deer groove out here? Oh, well, this, this particular mountain hunts a little bit better in the morning. It doesn't look like much from here, but you get in that and it's like, oh it's yeah, thick man. jungle bush, you know? My buddy Remy Warren is a writer and outfitter based out of Nevada who guides in New Zealand during the off season back home. He's agreed to give me some pointers and then turn me loose on the ranch where he operates. And my suggestion would be hunt the backside first. All right. Um, and then you can you hike back into this side and hunt it. Let's keep cruising up, man. Yeah. Sounds good. On the way into the mountains, Remy tells me about the flocks of wild sheep that have been running in this country for a couple hundred years somehow maintaining a separate existence from the domestic strains of sheep that drive so much of this nation's economy. Right away, we get lucky and we spot a flock from the car. Remy says it's a great opportunity to secure a camp meal that very few Americans get a chance to enjoy, wild lamb. The trick to this isn't so much killing any old sheep. That'd be easy. Instead, I'm trying to pick out a lamb that I can hit in the head without ruining any meat and without running the risk of having my bullet pass through and hit one of its buddies. I could maybe shoot it over your shoulder, I don't know. Yeah. But I don't want to, you know, kill an extra one. That little short-haired chocolate one. Yeah. There we go, ready? Head. Oh, that'll be a good little eater, man. <laughs> Goodness gracious. That was a perfect shot for the meat there. Can you imagine, man, how good that thing's gonna be? I'm envious. It's gonna be some tender lamb. That's about the best camp meat in the country right there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. good. I couldn't be happier. As someone who hunts for their own meat, I don't usually eat lamb since it's typically domestic. This is a rare treat. So I get it gutted out, and we continue up the mountain. I'm 
lucky because Remy sets me up in one of his favorite out of the way spots. It's like a local taking you to a restaurant that is not in the guidebooks. I just pack down in here somewhere and there, get off the ridge a little bit. Yeah, Should be get, good. Out, get yeah. out of the weather. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Thanks a lot for the yeah, lift. Bro. Thanks a lot for the access. Yeah. <laughs> I should be able to turn something up. Yeah, sounds good. All right, man. Talk in a little bit. There's still a few hours of light left in the day. So I quickly set up camp, skin and butcher my lamb so the flies don't get to it, and then gear up for a scout before it gets dark. All right, so let's go see what's going on in these mountains. When you're hunting for a brand new animal, especially in a faraway place, it starts out feeling not right. You feel like a interloper in some way, like you don't have business being here. It's something I try to overcome by just being out and feeling the place. The hours pass, and this scout turns up nothing. I'm almost glad to have had an afternoon of hunting and be completely skunked without seeing anything, because it's making me you know, more ready for success or more ready to see something. It'll be more pleasurable when I do find a deer than if I just came out and like, bam, there's a deer, you know? It'd feel like I had cheated the system to get into it too early. In the morning, there's fog and lots of it. Even before the sun rises, I can tell that visibility is going to be a matter of just yards. Can't see a thing right now. Maybe like 60, 70 yards. I'm just gonna hold up and wait for this to burn off. Right now, it's pointless to risk spooking something by wandering around when you just would have no idea it's there. My initial thought is to head up high. If this fog blows through, I'll be in a good glassing position. And if the fog doesn't blow through, maybe I'll be able to climb a little higher and survey the surrounding peaks. We just keep getting new clouds blowing through. It's been hours, and this fog has only gotten worse. I have to change my plan. This stuff is not lifted or burned off whatsoever. I'm just gonna start dropping all the way back down this mountain. I hope I can get an evening hunt down below this fog. I have no reason to think for sure that it's not foggy down there, but I can't go any higher. So I might as well go lower. Right up, 
I'm just gonna back out of here. The fog's getting more and more down. Today was a total bust. The only thing to do now is head back to camp, cook up some dinner, and hope that by tomorrow, the fog clears up. But it ain't all bad. At least I get a chance to cook up this gorgeous looking leg of lamb. Nothing fancy, just trussed to a stick and roasted over an open flame. Oh my goodness, that's a lamb leg fit for a foggy day right there. Oh, look how well that cooked. That is ridiculous. I can't believe how good that cooks. Lamb's just got that good fattiness where it tears off like roast chicken. I'd want to say this is my favorite piece of wild game I've ever eaten, but I just don't know if it's wild, if it counts as wild game or not. No non-tasty animals are harmed in the making of this program. Today I finally get a break. The fog is lifted and it is utterly beautiful out here. My plan is to head into fresh country and to cover as much ground with my feet and my binoculars as possible. I need to make up for lost time. Over the next several hours, I glass a ton of ground. I spy a few groups of deer here and there, but no stags. Finally, around noon, I catch a break. Oh, 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 oh. There's a nice stag. Just a munching. Yeah, that's a cool stag. I'm thinking that maybe if I go this way, I'll be keeping my altitude, and I'll be able to hopefully relocate them. I make my way toward the stag right on plan, but about halfway there, I run into a bit of a problem. There's hides around the crest of this ridge. Right where I need to go. I can't spook those from here. If I spook them now, they're gonna spill off toward that stag if I can go around and maybe spill them off that way. It'd be a lot better. Let's see if they go the right way when they spook. spilling off either side. They're just sitting up there, looking agitated. Barking at me. Kind of take a new approach. I have to back up here, cross the main valley, and then approach from a totally different ridge line. It will take a couple hours at least, but I don't want to risk spooking those hinds in the direction of the stag and then have them carry him off. Hopefully he'll stick around long enough for me to finally catch up to him. We're getting up into that stag zone now. We're on that mountain. Came down up this way. Now we're taking another crack at it. It's a long walk, but fortunately, today seems to be my lucky day. See that stag's antlers sticking up. He's patted down, just chilling out.
It was a fairly long range shot and it felt right on, but that stag just doesn't look hip. It's still on its feet and I'm planning a second shot when something in the bottom of my scope catches my eye. Oh my God, that stag is huge. I can't tell if I killed the one I shot and there's a giant one standing here. I just gotta wait and see if the one I shot leaves or not. Oh my God, look at that thing. He must have been just right there the whole time. If I miss that stag and then let that stag go, you're gonna see a crying TV host, man. The temptation to shoot is overwhelming, but then when the stag I shot tips right over, I'm glad I held off. That right there doesn't like make you a believer in red deer. These things are just badasses, man. I love these things. These things are no joke on size either. Look at this. Oh, you're big. You're in the For my first red stag, this guy is a dandy. They're bigger bodied than I expected and absolutely beautiful. I'm not a trophy hunter per se, but I must admit, I'm gonna like hanging this rack up as a reminder of my time here. It's always a little unnerving to me how easily a testicle comes out. Okay, so I got this stag gutted out, and it's coming on toward dark. And one of the beauties about New Zealand is they have no predators. You don't gotta worry about something getting into your meat and tearing it all to pieces. So what I'm gonna do is get a tenderloin for dinner, leave this guy here, come back down in the morning and start packing him up. This will take me four trips get him up that ridge, so I got a busy day tomorrow. Earlier, Remy told me they eat a lot of roast meat with pumpkin here in New Zealand. With that in mind, I'm gonna slice up my loin and prepare a very simple stag and pumpkin stew. That's a good way to have pumpkin. So that's it right there, New Zealand stag with pumpkin. That's good. Honestly, not as tough as I thought it would be coming out of the carcass. That's really good stuff. New Zealand is well over 8,000 miles from my home, or about a third of the way around the earth. When you get that far from home, you get the sense that all the old rules have been tossed out, that it's time to reinvent the world again. But in actuality, hunting red stag here in New Zealand has shown me the standard rules for hunting are pretty much the same no matter where you go or how far you wander. Keep your spirits up and hunt all day, no matter what's happening. Then get up the next day and hunt hard all over again. And when your chance does come, stay calm and pick a spot. Keep your head. Don't make dumb decisions. And when it's all done, be a man and eat your kill. That's good stuff, ma'am.